Hi, and welcome to another show. Well, today we've got a great guest today, an old friend of mine, Martin Baines, who is a sales training expert. He's worked with people like Rolls-Royce, Audi, Citroen, HSBC, Land Rover, Peugeot, lots of people, too, too many to, to list. He's got over 25 years experience in teaching people how to sell effectively. And in this uh, show, he talks about four ways you can get your prospective uh, customer or clients um, into your hands, I suppose, is one way, just getting the information from them so you can have an effective sales and why you need to get effective with sales. As Martin says on the show, um, if you're not good at sales, you have an expensive hobby. So you need to get good at sales. But there's ways of doing it which doesn't make you look like some cheesy car salesman. Um, but it's a really great uh, podcast. There's loads of information. Uh, Martin's a real gem. And so let's go over to it now. I hope you enjoy it. Martin Baines, sales trainer to the uninitiated who need their help. Welcome to the show, sir. Thank you, Simon. Great to be here. Great to be here. Trying to think about what to say there. Are the uninitiated? That's how you're wrong. Anyway, no, we with our uh, members, the IEB. One of the things that keep come, coming keeps coming up is about marketing and mm. sales. Now, marketing is essentially, I'm here, and sales is give me a cash. So that's, yeah. that's a really, really basic thing. But so many people, yeah, they struggle with sales. Um, so in your experience, well, impart your knowledge, sir. I've known yeah. you for many, many years. I know, we have, haven't we? Okay. Yes. Um, I think for a lot of people, the well firstly when you say sales a lot of people run a mile it's like no no, no i don't work in sales but yeah. if you are if you are running a business uh sorry you work in sales yeah because if you haven't got sales you haven't got a business you've just got a very expensive hobby yeah. <laughs> which is what i say to people but i yeah. think the this whole concept of sales has uh, uh, some negative uh, perceptions around it probably because uh, we've all had pushy salespeople and I say nobody wants free gas or electricity at eight o'clock at night do they because we're sat at home we're watching telly do they still do that yeah and and uh, well, when my daughter was very young I used to give the phone to her if somebody phoned up but that's a different story so I think there's a lot of people who think maybe that's how I'm going to come across to others so they take a step back from it but my philosophy is stop selling to people start helping people to buy yeah and how do we do that well you know you've got to take people through their buying journey in a way that makes it easy for them to go yes do you know what simon that, that makes complete sense let's go ahead with it so what, what and, you, uh, we, we funny mm. we talked about the, the podcast a while ago with penny pound we talked about we buy on emotion you know yes. when last time say hey martin let's go and be sold to just doesn't happen. Yeah, doesn't happen. So how do we start that conversation? How do we, yeah, what, what, what do we do? Well, I use the analogy of, of a house when I'm talking to people uh, about getting them to yes, which is ultimately what we want them to do, isn't it? Say yes and, and use our products and our services. And there's four rooms in this house that you have to take people through to make it easier for them to say yes. Now, it doesn't mean that they'll never say yes if you don't do it properly, but you'll just make it harder for yourself. And I'll give you a couple of examples of what I mean as I, as I describe this analogy. But I use the concept of signposting uh, with, with prospects. So what does that mean? Essentially, what I'd like to do, Simon, is, is ask you a few questions to find out a little bit about what you're looking for when it comes to a bookkeeper. What are some of the challenges that you've got? And if we're OK with that, then find out what your, what your thoughts are in terms of time frame, in terms of budget. And if there's anybody else that's involved in making that decision, how does that sound? Because then hopefully you're going to go, yeah, that sounds good. So you've got agreement from your prospect to it, go through the steps. Something. Now, years ago, I was involved with a, um, a network marketing company, and mm. it actually really taught me. I used to do door-to-door -door stuff. Can you believe? 
I had some canny ways of getting them. But one of the things we were told was get them to say no, because then they gone, ah, I have the power. I have said no. <laughs> so it, just, it was, it was it's, do you still do it? Is there a psychological it's thing? It's about reverse psychology, yes. Yeah, it's like, um, well, I've said no. It's like, is that a green top? No, it's it's red or burgundy. Like, <laughs> ah, so you've done it. Great. <laughs> was is that, <laughs> is there anything in that? Or was I sold a load of hogwash? Um, I don't know. It's not not something that I, I I get it and I understand it because then I've got rid of that negative thought process. Yeah. So the next thing in theory that I want to be saying is yes. I kind of think the more that you can get people to agree with you as you take them through their journey, right. the easier it becomes for them to say yes when you want them to say the most important yes of all, which is would you like to go ahead? So these four rooms, the four key areas that I think you absolutely should, must, and have to establish as much information as you can, yeah. are start with what I call the pain points. It doesn't sound right, does it? Take them into the no, room of pain. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, you know, what are the problems that you've got in your business? What are you trying it's to achieve? It? It's, you are there, it's, you know, a restaurant, you could say it solves the pain of, well, I'm hungry, I want something. I'm nice. hungry. Yeah. yeah, a car dealership. Well, the pain is I actually fed up with my current car. I want to get me to be in a bit nicer. Yeah. It's not pain as in, ow, there's blood going everywhere. So, yeah, just, yeah. To, just to uh, what there. are the problems, the wants, the needs that you have, Mr. Mrs. Prospect? Right. Um, but I think uh, uh, we're all consumers, right? And in, in, in the world of consumerism, if we are uh, thinking we're having a conversation with somebody that might be in sales, do we necessarily always tell them the truth? Because yeah. I think people tend to keep their cards quite close to their chest, don't they, sometimes? Because I don't want to give everything away to this person who's in sales. Yeah. So we really need to dig down. And, and we do that by asking some really effective questions. What are the challenges that you've got? What's that stopping you doing in your business? What yeah. happens if you don't do anything and you carry on? Ah, that's Have you a given up? question. Yeah, yeah. That makes me go, oh my God. I'll well, that's exactly what you want to be doing, Simon. Yeah. You want to be getting your prospects to sit there and go, actually, yeah, that sounds like me. I need to do something so, about so this. Those, those, are those four questions you're talking about, the four rooms in the house? So just read mm. Well, there's four areas that you absolutely have to establish. The first is what, what are the problems, the wants, and the needs of your prospect? All right. Well, yeah. Okay. Okay. The next area that you need to establish is time frame. Yeah. Okay. When are you looking to go ahead? When would you like to get started? Type questions. Yep. There's loads of questions. I haven't got time to uh, illustrate them all. Yeah. Budget. Right. Third one. Budget. Is, yep. is the third one. And, you know, quite a lot of people are cautious about asking the money question because we're brought up and it's rude to talk money isn't it yeah, but, but if I've you've heard so many times i don't have a budget you're like oh. yeah <laughs> but there's ways and means to get around that okay yeah. um and that's not unusual i hear lots of people say they haven't got a budget tell me how are you expecting to pay for the services of a bookkeeper if you haven't got budget type yeah. questions yeah yeah how are we going to fix this problem for you? Right, right, okay. And then the final room, if you like, is the decision maker. Right. So who else, apart from you, is in, is going to be involved, if anybody, in making this decision? Yeah. Uh, if it is just you, great. But for quite a few people, they may need to speak to other people as well. And going through these four rooms will give you all of the information that you need for these four areas and it doesn't matter how long it takes in each one yeah the more information you get the easier it is to go from that metaphorical room to close the door behind you i've got everything from that area that i need all the problems the pain points the challenges yeah the what ifs i've got all of that great let's move on to the time frames and we ask the same questions and we, we, we repeat that so that you've closed the door metaphorically of course on those four areas yeah and you've got everything that you need in order to be able to provide a solution that's going to using the pain analogy cure my pain yeah and i suppose when you i mean this is what i've done before you know i've, I've I, I love that four rooms i really like that 
But when I've had that conversation with them, you then find out, or everything you said, everything you need to know. So when you do then put a proposal in, you mm. can reiterate those points that Absolutely. I'm really looking forward to getting started. So we have when we have that, because you've got that goal in mind of 12 months time where you want to be in San Tropez or whatever it is, I don't know. And you're like, yeah. So one, it means you listen. And two, you've got that knowledge. It's really yes. powerful. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah. And actually what it also can help with, in theory, is objections. Yeah. The people that push back going, mm, I'm not sure, I'm not sure. And the more information you can get that ticks the box in those four areas, problem, pain, yeah. budget, time frame, decision maker, the less likelihood there is of somebody coming back to you saying, oh, I need to speak to my other half. Yeah. Because you've already asked that question. And if you don't ask that question, if you play it forward, oh, well, I'm not thinking of, 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 of setting up with a bookkeeper for the next 12 months. Well, why didn't you tell me? Well, you didn't ask. Yeah, yeah. So asking these questions can yeah. almost take out the objections that is really good because there's nothing worse than you've gone through all of that and they said yeah. well actually now i'm looking but oh i'm just waiting. i need to speak to my other half why didn't you tell me well you yeah. didn't ask me yeah absolutely now of course yeah, the theory is great isn't it but in practice you'll still get those objections so, and... so do you do you recommend people practice this you know on their other half you, you're a really difficult person <laughs> tonight yeah um, can i practice on you Yes, completely. Because um, who do we generally tend to practice our skills on most often? It's our customers and our prospects, isn't it? And let's be honest, are they the best people to be doing this? Because if you get it wrong with a real customer, yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. You can, you, if you get it wrong too often, then you're going to be in trouble. So, yeah. you know, part of the stuff that I do is going through these sessions is right, let's, let's, let's play this out. Let's do some practice. When, when you come across, and it's something I've talked about before um, uh, on coffee mornings, things like that, mm. when I talk about pricing, um, you do it with a set, well, you've got to do it with a bit of confidence. And I was always mm. told, once you've given the price, the first one to speak loses. So you need, <laughs> because so many people go, so Martin, it's a thousand pounds an hour. That'd be nice. Um, and then you'll, there'll be a pause and you'll be thinking, oh my God, that's it. Well, yes. maybe we can do a deal or maybe I, for you, I can do a friend's rate. You're like, you killed it you absolutely killed it so what what when it comes to look at the, the big money shot uh what yeah. you recommend people doing that again is it practice or what what are the things Obviously, yeah and i i, I think before you go in there or... yeah, yeah yeah dutch courage <laughs> um i think as long as you have got all of that information in these four rooms metaphorically speaking again uh, a lot of the time the prospects will will close themselves yeah because they can see the value in working with you they can see how that you are going to cure my problems and my challenges they've done it within the budget that we've discussed roughly speaking but you know if you go online and you google sales closing techniques there's there's hundreds of the things and i i take a slightly different view on it in, insofar as it's just asking the question yeah at the appropriate point would you so would you is, is everything okay with what we've discussed so far yeah okay good have you got any other questions stuff that we've not covered no i think we're good on that great so um would you like to go ahead love it love it yeah it's, it's... and then you're absolutely right the power of silence is massive because a second can almost feel like half an hour yeah and yeah, you're right he so, I, you know i was taught public speaking um I just said, um, can't believe it. <laughs> and one of the things is don't say, um, actually pause is, is that, that that comes from being the youngest of five kids. And if you didn't say, um, if you paused, someone else would jump in. But it was, it's one of those things. So just be really confident on how you come across as well. And if mm. you come across confident, it's like, wow, they must be good then. Because mm. that come across, you know, if you come nervous, it's sort of like, well, actually, do I really want you doing my books? If you're a bit nervous and you're a bit... You know, because yes. you might be have to, uh, you have to might have to chase up, you know, clients who haven't paid. You know, I need someone who's going to be right. Come on, um, we need to have this paid. Blah blah mm -hmm. whatever. So yeah, comp, I think yeah, practicing, practice, practice. Tone of voice, yeah. the way you know, on on Zoom and other platforms, yeah. you can still see body language to a degree. Yeah. Of course, on a face to face basis, 
it's much more evident. So yes, it's the way that you hold yourself and the way that you communicate and the language that you use and yeah, assertive without being over the top, yeah. confident. And in terms of influencing, I use the concept of acting as if. Yeah. Acting as if you've already got the business yeah. in the bag. Because yeah. psychologically, you're going to sound a lot more confident if you're yeah. thinking, yes, this person absolutely is going to say yes to me. So yeah. when would you like to start, Simon? Yeah. Shall we get going with this? Well, I mean, Muhammad Ali, it's um, NLP, have a, have a thing called it. So sort of, if you don't know what NLP is, it's Neuro Linguistic Programming. Neuro -linguistic. Uh, uh, Richard Bandler, a bit of a strange oddball. But anyway, um, uh, Muhammad Ali used to have this thing which he called future history. So mm. he would go into a ring already pictured the end of the fight. So he would yeah. just really picture it in his mind, everything, how it would feel, yes. how it would sound, how it would smell, probably horrible, mm. guts and stuff, but, <laughs> and he would imagine being, having his held hand aloft uh, up, up, and the referee go, and the winner is Muhammad Ali. And in his mind's eye, which is a part of the brain called the reticular activating system, it would yep. switch on, so you're basically your subconscious, and it would just be picking up everything yeah. to make that outcome happen. So before you go into that meeting, as you've said, in NLP, it's a well-formed outcome. Um, yes. But you just picture it, you know, how you're going to be. The end mm -hmm. result, you don't picture the beginning or the middle. It's the end. So absolutely go in. Maybe not hug them and kiss them as if you have won the business. <laughs> <laughs> like, Martin, we won. get out of it. What's the matter with you? But the brain, the brain doesn't know that what you're visualising isn't actually happening. Absolutely. And this is something that's really key because this is how a, a hypnotist can get you clucking like a chicken. Your subconscious yes. is incredibly powerful. So also, on the same note, watch your language this is probably another another show but you know when you say oh i'm forgetful i don't sleep well or i'm clumsy mm -hmm. yes you are because you've just told yourself that anyway so go in there with that yeah that confidence but i love that room idea so i'm like it's, it's like saying to the kids in, isn't it that room that room yeah that room probably i'll go in i go oh, i haven't tired of that room for a bit i've got to go in that room oh the wall <laughs> so but yeah no brilliant love that idea so it's like saying something. to the kids, isn't it? Um, don't drop the plate. And they hear, drop the plate, don't. Yeah, that's the thing. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. The it's scripts good. that we run in our minds can be really, really impactful on how we deliver our messages and communicate and the responses that we get from people. Yeah. Oh, it's, yeah. God, you're so right. It's, it's the classic thing. Don't think about a pink elephant with spots on it. And what are you doing? Thinking of a pink yeah. elephant because you've got to process it to work yes. it out so go oh, yeah yes so don't fall down from that tree well i wasn't going to but now <coughs> i've got a funny story about telling him not to do something but i won't go there it's not the time or the hour for that but it's uh involves uh anyone know what a swimming costume but that's another story for another day that's another story yes <laughs> and there's there's quite a lot of people that in terms of objections you'll still get them and there's ways and means of managing them however the the one that a lot of people really struggle with is I want to think about it. Yeah. And for me, you've got to be careful, but there are ways and means that you can manage that objection if it is an objection. Yeah. And depending on the, the rapport that you've built, the relationship that you've built with that prospect over however long, yeah. you can go back and thinking about your tone of voice, of course, here, okay, I understand it's a big decision. So you're demonstrating some empathy. If it was me, I'd probably want to have a think about this as well before I went ahead. So I get it. Yeah. Tell me, what is it that you need to think about? Yeah. And then you can see I'm nodding. Yeah. Psychological. Staying silent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that <clears throat> moment of silence may prompt your prospect just to fill the gap with the thing that is stopping them from going ahead yeah that and if that if that happen. does happen great so what you're saying is yeah. it's the hourly rate that's concerning you yeah yes okay so if we can sort that and get that to a stage where we're both happy what you're saying is you you'd be good to go ahead uh -huh. yeah, nodding, nodding. but if they if yeah. they then say because quite a lot of people then come back and go well no i really do need to think about it and at this point, you've got to be careful not to almost come across as being pushy, because if you are, people will be like, no, 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 hang on a minute. I've said I need to think about it. But depending on the on the rapport and the relationship that you've built so far, you may 
be able just to try and establish one more time. And what I would recommend people do is think about something that you know your prospect does like about your solution. I'll say that again, does like. Yeah. I need to think about it. I get that. What is it you need to think about? Well, I just need to think about it, Martin. Okay, I understand. Is it the hourly rate that you're you're concerned about, knowing that it isn't the hourly rate? Right. Because this is a bit of reverse psychology. <laughs> Hopefully they will come back and go, no, no, I'm okay with that. At which point your response is, okay, so it's, and again, the silence. Yeah. Because Brilliant. you're more likely to get that whilst you're with somebody than if you give a proposal and you just say, right, give me a call if, if there's anything. I'll think about that, right? Give me a call if you want to go ahead. And then they, they disappear and they ghost you and you never see so them on, again. On that phone call, something I was taught years ago, um, mm. and it was, so let's say I, I, I need a call from you or I've, I've done the proposal to you and the email them and nine times out of 10, what most people do is, I mean, you're, you're the expert here. This is just something I, I, I learned years ago from. Mm. And instead of saying, are you free for a call to catch up, discuss this? They have two options. Yes or no. So what I was told was, let's say I email you on a Monday saying, Hey, Martin, uh, really like to catch up and talk about this proposal. I'm free on Tuesday or Thursday. So the options are choose your Thursday, mm. not yes. no. Yes. And that always seems to work because it's you're, so basically I'm giving mm. you two options, but no, one of those is not no. So that does. Mm. Sort of, yeah, it does. And if I may park that just for a few seconds sure. to come back to this second, I want to think about it. Yeah. If the third time somebody says, no, I really need to think about it at that point, genuinely, they probably do need to go and think about it. So you have to let them do that. Yeah. But this absolutely links into what you've just asked me, and I call them nanos. Give yourself a next action, which is NA. Next action is, right, you're going to have a think about it. When am I going to phone you next? Uh, Tuesday or Wednesday? Love it, love it. Because that becomes the next opportunity. Yeah, really. No, that's fine. That becomes the next opportunity, N-A-N-O, -N -O, the next opportunity for me to speak to you. So Tuesday or Wednesday, I'll send you the proposal. Right, great. How long would you need to look over that, Simon? Let's get the next call in the diary. Love it. Because Love you're it. managing the process. Yeah. You're not controlling the customer, but you're, you're controlling the process, not in a manipulative way. Yeah. Because it happens. Yeah, send me a proposal. I'll have a look through it. And then you phone and there's no answer. You yeah. phone and leave a voicemail, they don't return it. You email, you email, you email, and they've gone into witness protection. <laughs> yeah, but you know what? I could, <laughs> could, could you use this line? You know, if you are, obviously, we're talking about bookkeepers here, but if mm. you as the bookkeeper will be chasing up their clients who aren't paying, if, if, if they would have a negative going, well, well okay, don't be pushy. So I'm only doing this because I'm just demonstrating mm. how I would be with your clients who don't pay. Yeah, I like that. Oh, that's a good, good idea. Mm, I like that. Yeah. But the more commitment you can get, it's it's getting to yes, yeah. which was where we started with this. And, and it won't work every single time, unfortunately. There's no magic bullet. If there was, I would be on a beach somewhere. Yeah. But you're minimising the likelihood of people ghosting you or not returning your calls you're managing the process you're signposting people through it this is what's going to happen if you're all okay with that it'll take about half an hour 40 minutes however long it takes yeah. are you comfortable with that have you got and, and it's a conversation yeah and I think you know going back to the beginning people think sales is a, a dirty word oh, it's they've got these these yeah. images of sharp suited, dare I say it, double glazing car salesmen having yeah, sold cars cool. in my life. Yeah. yeah. But it isn't. It's it's having conversations, asking the right questions, yeah. listening, and helping people along their buying journey in a way that differentiates you from one or two of your competitors that quite likely these prospects will be talking to as well. Yeah. Yeah. So the more value you can build in your solution, and you do that by really identifying what's going on in their world, what, what's going to happen 
if you don't do anything with this stuff, think about all of those receipts that you've got piling up in your drawers. What's going to happen if you don't do anything with those? Yeah. Yeah. And no, then you're starting to get people thinking, mm, yeah, actually, that's probably not going to be a good thing if I carry on. Right. The great news is that we can deal with all of those with no problem at all. Fantastic. Yeah. How does that sound? Yes. And you're getting people to yes. And it becomes a simple question of, so <laughs> would you like to go ahead? When should we start? Yeah. Brilliant. Love it. I love the four, four rooms idea. Really, really good. Fantastic. But it's not, it's not pushy. No, no, it's, it's great. And again, practice, practice. So yes. um, three questions. Um, yes. Tell me something not many people know about you. Keep it clean. <laughs> uh, 1985. Here's a story. When I was 16, which gives the yeah. game away. Uh, my name is on the honours board at a golf club in Bedfordshire called John O'Gaunt Golf Club. Junior Open champion 1985. I used to play a lot of golf. Oh. 12 years before that, on that board, are the initials of a certain Nicholas Alexander Faldo, Knight of the Realm. So I've won a golf tournament that Nick Faldo has won. Good Lord, fantastic. <laughs> These days, I can't get it through the clown's mouth at the, at the crazy golf, but that, that was a long time ago. Fantastic, yeah. I, I, I knew his, uh, his ex-wife, actually, Melanie Faldo. For years. Melanie Faldo, yeah. She kept the name, didn't she? Yeah, yeah she did, yeah. Um, so, penultimate question. You're on your deathbed. Um, yes. Everything, this interview is gone. Everything you've written, all the coaching you've done, all the hundreds of companies all over the world you've, you've helped sell and all the rest of it. Um, you're allowed to leave humanity one piece of advice what would it be five words the, the the five most important words in the world it all begins with belief right. relative to life relative to business a hundred percent relative to sales because really? if you believe what was it henry ford if you think you can do something or you think you can't do something, guess what? You're right. Yeah. It's that brain programming element again, isn't it? Yeah. It all begins with belief. Love that. Fantastic. Brilliant. And the final question. And the final question. Uh, where can people <laughs> get hold of you? Uh, the best way is Linktree. So okay. I've got all my socials there, which is HTTPS slash slash www.tree isn't it it's link link link, link, link tr .ee. that's it link I, I should know i've got an account yeah link tr.ee forward slash mb dot sales training mb dot sales training excellent so link or t dot r e e yeah, <laughs> God, yeah. i know or, yeah. let's do the simple one www.mb as in my initials hyphen ls as in learning solutions.co.uk mb hyphen ls.co.uk we will put all the links on the video and Marvelous. podcast as well so it's all there martin superstar thank you so much always good hope that's you. helped no hope brilliant. that's helped some i people. love the four rooms really good so people listening to this and watching it practice you've got to do it uh yeah. you've got to get comfortable with it if you don't like sales you're gonna have what what is this um oh, oh, there was a brilliant line it's gone it's just slipped my mind but it's it's I think, I, the wrong one that came to my mind which is um keeping busy but with no profit is like eating soup with a fork you stay busy but get, get hungry. that's the wrong one to use but but no it's, you've got to get good at it um was yeah. it poor, sales, poor, poor sales people have skinny children that was it. There you, go. <laughs> so, you don't have to like it. You just have to do it. You've got to get on with it and just be you as well. You know, we've I've yes. talked about this with other people, but you know, the Penny Power one. Mm. Um, my daughter just said, you know, just be you, mum. Um, and she's got an OBE and, and you know, was huge and is hugely successful. Um, yes. Martin, thank you very much. Um, really good to see you. Thanks for imparting your wisdom. You're very welcome. Thanks, guys. Take care. Until next time, stay tuned. Don't forget, if you're watching this on YouTube, subscribe so you automatically get a notification. If you hit the subscribe and there's a bell button, you get notified when there's a new video, which they, they normally go every one to two weeks now. So thanks very much. Stay tuned.